Hey there everybody, it's Russ, and uh, today we are going to do a live stream of an unboxing of a bike I'm really excited about. This is the Bear Claw Bo Jackson, and uh, before I start off with the live stream, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, one, uh, we've actually got another live event later on this evening at about 5 p.m. Um, Mountain Standard Time. I'm going to be premiering the uh, trip, the, a video of the trip that we recently did with Swift Adventure Co. So if you guys follow us on Instagram, you know we were in the San Juans, uh, biking and pedaling and doing some art, learning from uh, Chris McNally, pretty, I think, fairly well-known bike illustrator. Um, so yeah, so look for that at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, MST. And the, one reason why I'm doing all these things right now is because in two days, uh, I will be going to uh, the Ochicos uh, out in Prineville to, uh, whoa, there's a spider there, uh, do a bike packing event put on by Good Bike Company. And it's an interesting format. It's four days semi-supported uh, bike packing where uh, you have to carry all your camping gear, but the organizers, you know, when you get into camp, there's gonna be a campfire, there's gonna be uh, food waiting for you. So it's, it's actually a pretty cool format. Uh, I did it last year. Uh, it was really, it was really cold and rainy. Uh, I think it was like four days of freezing rain. Hopefully, I won't get that. Anyways, how that ties into this bike is that this is the bike I'm hoping to ride for that event. Um, I have to make sure it fits and that it fits with my packing system. If you guys saw our previous series of videos on how not to go bike packing, uh, I was trying to dial in uh, my packing system using the cutthroat. So that will be my backpack. That will be my backup bike if for some reason uh, this guy doesn't work. But hopefully it works because I've been really excited to uh, ride this one. So I'm going to check in the comments real quick. Um, Cool, so it looks like Bear Claw is in the chat room. So uh, Jason from Bear Claw is gonna help me out. I know he's got to leave uh, in about half an hour. So if you guys have very specific questions about uh, Bear Claw, about this bike, be sure to ask him in the chat. Uh, cool, so let's see, we've got Finland, we've got Scott from Detroit, um, Alex in Alaskan. Yeah, if uh, you guys are in the chat room, can you guys hear me? Someone let me know how the audio sounds. And also, uh, let's let's figure out where you're from. Uh, I know I usually do these in the evening so that uh, people in North America can watch it after work. But since, <laughs> since the Ochico event is in like two days, I needed some time. I wanted to do it earlier in the day so I can mess with the packing and uh, make, sure, make sure I can ride it. So, uh, let's see. <clears throat> All right, Alex from uh, the... From the LBC, sweet. Yeah, I used to live in Long Beach, like around Belmont Shore area, then on 4th Street, close, close to Portfolio. I'm drinking from uh, this lovely orange gravel stoke water bottle. These guys are in San Diego. They put on a series of events. And if you can't tell, orange is my favorite color. Also rocking the new uh, Rivendell hat that came in the mail. Um, sweet, Portland. Okay, so audio is good. I uh, got Tyler from Sacramento, Puerto Rico in the house. Awesome. Uh, well, uh, I guess let's get this uh, unboxing and assembly started. I was supposed to click. It didn't quite do that. So um, I guess facts about this bike. Uh, Bear Claw is a brand. Uh, they're based out of Michigan. I think fairly new, if, if I'm not mistaken. Jason, how long have you guys been around? And um, the bike that really initially caught my eye was the Thunderhawk, which is their 650B kind of gravel race bike. And what I liked about it is um, it's got a chain stay a little bit on the shorter end, like 428, which is kind of an unusual number. A lot of companies either go 430 or 425. And I was curious about how, how that 428 would feel in the back. But that is not the bike that was sent. Uh, this is the Bo Jackson. Um, Bo Jackson is, uh, I don't know how you would describe it, Jason. Looking at the specs, I would kind of classify it as either a gravel plus bike or a, an adventure bike. So the frame is titanium carbon fork, um, although I believe there is a titanium fork option and uh, it's, it's built around a plus size tire. I think pictures I've seen of it were using the Coronados. These look like they are uh, the Schwabi G1, so probably like a 2.8. Um, that's something I, I requested specifically because for the event, 
There is a fair amount of uh, road riding and hard pack, so I didn't want to be completely bogged down riding super knobbies. Um, yeah, Adventure often, this is a bike that, uh, or this is a brand, and you know, I'm really excited about what they're doing. Uh, sweet, adding to the hat collection. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> um, so it's, it's stoked, I'm stoked to finally get in here. I mean, it's a little late in the season, so it, uh, we'll see. So it usually snows around Halloween is the first snow we get here. And then by November it tends to stick. So I'm not gonna have too much time with this bike, unfortunately, but we'll do what we can do. Okay, uh, where's my camera? Where's my camera? Shoot, camera's over there. I like to take a photograph of the bikes before I pull them out so I remember how they're packed. <laughs> okay, so Jonathan from Quebec. Uh, Amir, thanks for watching the videos. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Louis and Elijah, Kamusta from Colorado. All right, fellow Filipinos. Okay, I'm just taking a picture of the how it's packed. So I can hopefully replicate this when I send it back. Okay. It's interesting, uh, I've been reviewing bikes for the last couple years and the packing has changed. It used to be um, a lot of like the pool noodles, now they're like these things, which I think kind of conform to the shape of the bike, which is kind of cool. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm just gonna pull it out. Oh, okay. Saddle. And bicycle, yay! Anything else in here? Nope. Okay, so we have bicycle, or mostly bicycle. And you guys, my apartment is an absolute mess <laughs> at the moment. Okay, so. I think what I will do is uh, I'm gonna put this on the stand and unpackage it that way so you guys can see it. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler Bo Bro has been stocking Bear Claw on the gram. So have I, so have I. It's, it's cool to finally see one in person. Uh, let me get some scissors. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions specific to the specific to Bear Claw or the Thunderhawk, uh, ask them within the next half hour so Jason from, from Bear Claw can help answer them. <laughs> okay. Try not to cut my fingers off here. So I do believe this has no dropper post, so if you guys saw my thesis unboxing video, hopefully this will go much smoother than that. Uh, okay, so whiskey saddle, carbon, no, aluminum. Uh, what's the diameter on this? It looks larger than normal. Like, a, is this a 31.8? Is this an oversized uh, thingy? Gonna get my nerdy 31.6, okay. That'll save me getting the digital cal calipers out. So, so Jason, why, what's the, what's the reason for an oversized um, seat post? Is that for future compatibility with a uh, dropper post, I'm assuming? So, okay, we got the post in here. I'm gonna put this on the stand so you all can see it. Then we can weigh it at the end of uh, the assembly. All right. 
So there's the bike. I'm gonna take a couple more pictures so I can remember how they uh, packaged it. So let's see. Interestingly, front wheels on the drive side. Uh, that looks like it's kind of fork is facing forward. Handlebars on this side. Derailleur is left installed. Lots of packing material. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing, I don't know if you guys realize this, but I, it's, this part's the fun part. Packing them uh, back up to ship back is generally not as fun and is a lot slower going. Okay. Um, just have to be careful. So I believe these are set up tubeless. And... Uh, I just have to put air in them. So another thing to photograph is the hub protectors. Oop. Remember to put those back in there. Yeah. Okay. So do you guys have, have any other questions about this bike or my recent trip to the San Juans, um, I mean, you guys will see the video later on, but if you want any kind of advanced information, feel free to ask. Okay, so we got a wheel, uh, Schwabi G1, all around light. It's got kind of the little nubbins here, so tightly spaced so they roll fast on a, kind of a harder packer pavement, but still manage to be grippy. Um, I believe these are what uh, Laura has on her G-Road. Uh, not this width, but similar tire. Uh, the uh, hub is velocity, rim is the velocity dually. So there you go. <laughs> what size tire did you get? Uh, I believe these are 2.8. I'm not sure. You'd think they'd put things important like size and not just the brand and print. Um, it says 27, yeah, it's 28, 2.8. Uh, Tyler, bro, on a scale of one to 10, how awesome was your San Juan ride? Uh, the, <laughs> the trip run by Swift was awesome. The weather was a solid two. <laughs> uh, you guys will see in the video, we got a little bit more rain than we expected, had to kind of uh, shift plans, but everyone still had a good time. Uh, it just meant more time for art, I guess. So, let me see. I think I'll, I'm going to put the handlebars on first, and then I will unpack the rest of the bike. All right, so we got 138 people in the room. That's awesome. Uh, if you guys haven't told me where you're from yet, uh, put, put your location. I'm always curious about how many uh, global global viewers we've got. And uh, it's been hard trying to find a time that works for people in the US as well as people in Europe and Asia. So I'm still constantly experimenting with that. Um, let's see, we got Michigander, uh, someone from Melissa Nash from Marin, California. I recognize that name. You've been asking a lot of uh, great questions. I, I hope I'm answering them all. <laughs> uh, West Slip of Colorado, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, Sweden. All right. <laughs> Albuquerque, New Mexico. Nice. Pennsylvania, 2 a.m. in the Philippines. Thanks, thanks for staying up. Boston, Kansas, Kansas living in uh, Colorado. A lot, a lot more elevation in Colorado than Kansas. Um, Montreal or in Singapore. Nice, awesome, Miami, Florida. Sweet, we've got a pretty good kind of uh, representation of uh, the US and, and abroad. Um, so I know since we have so many kind of worldwide viewers, what's the uh, shipping availability for these bikes, Jason, uh, in, in case people wanna know if they can order one or not. Okay, Vegas, Australia. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of Australians lately, which is pretty cool. One of my favorite bikes is, uh, you know, or brands rather, is uh, based in Australia. 
or half half of it is based in Australia, and that's Crest, doing interesting things with steel. Um, and speaking of Crest, I actually ended up buying a Crest Bambora, guys. Uh, Matt couldn't sell me his, but while I was in Portland, someone had a line on a small Bambora that wasn't built up yet, and uh, I ended up buying that. Uh, Golden Pliers is shipping me out a partially built bike today that I will then complete here. And I will soon have my Bambora. <laughs> um, another cool thing that's going to happen with the Bambora is, uh, I don't know if he's in the chat, but there's a IG account, Schmidt Outdoors. He started making frame bags. And he's actually, <laughs> we were joking around, and I was like, you know, you should do a, a Pomplamoose pattern uh, frame bag. And uh, next thing I know, he's mocking it up. So he's going to get a uh, Pomplamoose print which is totally gravel casual. <laughs> I think uh, I already know what the hashtag is going to be for, for when we start talking about it. And it's going to be pimp my ride. Pimp my ride. Sorry, I got to concentrate a little bit here. Uh, ba -ba. So the handlebars, these look like they are, they are cow chippers. So one of my favorite types of bars for sure. Um, I like them compared, I like them better than the wood chippers. I feel like the wood chippers are a little on the weird side if I'm to be honest. Like they have to be set up higher uh, since the primary position is in the drops. Um, the, cow, the cow chipper, or yeah, the cow chipper seems to strike a nice balance between uh, the wood chipper and um, the cowbell, which uh, was my previous favorite until <laughs> until the the uh, cow chipper came out. Okay, we've got handlebars here. Oh. All right. Okay, I'm gonna move this computer up. Melissa Nash, how many bikes do I own? Uh, one, two, about six or seven per personally owned bikes. Um, lots of review bikes uh, in the apartment at the moment, but I do not own those, and those go back to the manufacturers. Okay. I know someone's gonna give me grief about using these for cutting things, but that's what I got. <laughs> so first look at the fork here. Tempted to just tear it, which I will do. Yeah, yeah these are the 46 cow chippers. So I believe the widest that they make. Have you guys seen the, uh, the new uh, salsa, not salsa, the new Surly gravel bars? They've got like a little bit of a rise, but one thing that stood out to me was they were offering the width in 48. And I think that's interesting because I think we're gonna see within the next year or so, people expanding beyond just 46. And it, it makes sense if you're doing kind of a gravel bike packing, uh, you know, you want the extra width to, to put bags, <laughs> to put bags. It's basically about the bags for me. Uh, but I also like the wider width uh, for, for kind of rocky descents. I mean, it just makes sense, right? Like mountain bikes have uh, really wide bars, and uh, you know, road, you know, for, so for the eight in terms of mountain bike is isn't very is not very wide. I'm gonna grab some scissors so I don't accidentally scratch things here. Let's see. Should I just Peel the tape. Ta-da! It says bear claw. Nice. Titanium, titanium is such a pretty material. Uh, what has been the worst bike I've ridden? Um, I think the most problematic bike, and I he hesitate to use the word worse because it's probably a good bike for someone, but it was the uh, Aventon $600 gravel bike and it was problematic for many reasons. One was the dropouts weren't aligned. I had to really muscle the wheels in. Um, 
it was heavy and there's nothing wrong with necessarily a heavy bike but it was geared you know it had a compact road double and it's geared for it's got that aspirational gearing that you put on like really light bikes but it was stuck on a really heavy bike so the component choice wasn't good it was kind of a really stiff ride i mean i think if it, if they offered that in 650b would kind of compensate for uh just the, the jackhammeriness of the frame uh but the biggest issue was just the qc with the dropouts um so i really hesitate to recommend that one but i will say this marin uh, nicasio plus which i think msrp is 8 850 so sub 900 is really good nine speed wide range single 650b raft the bat um yeah look for that review soon okay we've starting to look like a bike here it's looking good i don't know what do you guys think of the frame so far <laughs> i think it looks pretty hot <laughs> uh ty just looks looks awesome um i've ridden a few tie bikes I've reviewed two on the channel. Both of them were by a brand called Ren Cycles in Portland. I reviewed their cross bike, the Ivan, and their touring bike, which were Thai. And uh, one thing that struck me was that Thai feels like a really nice deal. <laughs> but also, you know, since I rode those bikes and they were from the same brand and uh, presumably the same uh, tubing of the Thai, uh the the geometry made a huge difference i thought the, the the touring bike was a little too pokey and the ivan the cross bike was was my favorite of the two so yes materials do matter but so does geometry and that's one thing definitely try to address uh, with the bicycle flavor wheel okay these guys are a little bit stuck on so i may have to rub these things off later foamy bits foamy bits on the tie not a big thing. Let's see. I'm going to take a quick break and see if I can answer some questions. Yeah, it's looking sharp. A Cuddy Stom. Uh, yep, Carbon Fork. Thanks, uh, Scrooge1913. Um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, Bear Claw is not a QBP brand. It is, I believe, their, their own thing. Uh, can this run on sand? Yes, it sounds like uh, from Jason that this is kind of one of the motivations for this bike to run on the, the sandy stuff in Mich Michigan. Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> Whenever we lived in uh, Oregon, uh, in Portland, always had a blast when uh, people from different states would pronounce it Oregon. It's like, no, we're still here. <laughs> it's Oregon. Um, Okay, I'm gonna cut this big hefty thing here. All right. So, drivetrain is a SRAM GX. And how many cogs do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. Uh, the front one is a 32. And I'm so excited about that because I will need, <laughs> I will need this <laughs> in the Ochico Mountains. Um, I'm assuming the rear is like a, what is it? 40 something, hopefully. It is a 40, 42. All right. That should, that should hopefully get me up and over the hills. <laughs> uh, SRAM Rival 1 cable. Okay, cool. Uh, anything else? Let's see. How much uh, does that allow for as much weight as steel or aluminum? Uh, yeah, so just to be clear, brifters are rival. Uh, these say GX on the crank. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I would assume that maybe the carbon forks don't have as much of a weight limit, but Jason from Bear Claw. Um, do you guys have a recommended uh, weight limit for these guys? Um, let me know. Let me know. Uh, okay. So Wai Sing Lee asks, what's the difference between the tie and carbon forks uh, from tire width? And why would someone choose one over the other? That's a great question. I'd love to hear the answer to that one. <laughs> uh, 
Um, for me personally, I would probably lean towards uh, Thai, just because I I like uh, I like metal things. Um, you know, I've come to, to trust carbon, but I also like to, to do d dumb things on my bike bikes on occasion. What's interesting is I actually, when we were in um, in Seattle, I went on a bike ride with uh, some of the folks from Rodriguez Bikes, and one of the, the guys that worked there, I, I believe, had a, a bear claw tie fork. It was kind of big and segmented, looked really rad on his bike. Okay. So we've got this uh, cable actuated disc brakes, so I don't have to worry about uh, accidentally squishing these guys. And yeah, so that's pretty easy. <laughs> so excited. Uh, let's put in the, the front wheel and it'll look like a bike. And then we'll weigh it and then we'll answer more questions. Uh, let's see. Okay. Wrong size. So I'm just removing the um, through axle here in the front and putting in the front wheel and then I will weigh it. Someone made a I don't know if it was a, a serious comment or just an asinine comment about, oh, you should weigh it before you inflate the tires. Okay, so we will do that this time to make that one person happy because I guess that's my job here. <laughs> Making individual cranky commenters happy. Um, I'm just kidding. Most of the time it's, it's pretty good. Occasional crappy commenter, uh, but that's what kind of what you remember. Okay. Just trying to slip it through. You're in. I actually find it's easier to put these on the bike on the ground because it kind of naturally weighs it down in the right spot. So I think I will do that. Uh, Okay, feeling pretty good. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I, I find it easier to put in stuff when it's kind of weighted down. Oh, all right. Come on. Okay. In the hub. Just threading it down, not too tight. Okay, we got a bike. We got a bike, guys. <laughs> I'll put it up on the stand for a hot second so we can admire it in all its glory before I weigh it. Without air because that was important to someone. <laughs> uh, let's see. So carbon fork, 100 grams lighter and stiffer. Uh, yeah, so it's looking good. Let's just do a quick once over on it. So SRAM Rival, uh, one by cable actuated. TRP brakes, uh, we talked about the hubs, velocity hub. Velocity, Velocity du Dually uh, rim, Schwabi G1s, 2.8. Uh, carbon fork, it's got a three pack mount. Doesn't appear to have uh, eyelets down here. So probably can't run a front low rider on this rack. It does have uh, something at the crown here. So it could potentially put a, a fender, I'm assuming. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, so the frame, titanium, very nice. Uh, no, no nubbins up here for a top two bag, but three pack mount here. There's also three pack mount here, slightly curved seat tube. So this would be interesting. 
uh, bottle, bottle mount here. So you've got options in terms of uh, bottle placement. You can move it further up or further down, uh, depending on what you fancy. Uh, moving to the rear of the bike, we've got eyelets up here, so it can run a rear rack. Uh, eyelets down here, so support strut for the rear rack. And um, 32 tooth front chain ring, SRAM GX crank set, uh, SRAM rival rear derailleur 11 speed, 42 tooth in the rear. Um, yeah. So far, the frame, if you guys could see this in person, it's, I mean, it looks like a beautiful, you know, Thai bike. I do love the logo, very understated. It's not like Design Vomit, uh, Bo Jackson, also very subtle. Uh, the welds look pretty tight, like a nice, like stack of, stack of dimes, what you're looking for. Um, what else? You guys probably can't see it here, but there's this kind of uh, plated material here that's kind of bent. Uh, pretty industrial looking. I think this gives you the clearance for chain ring, wider tires, all that good stuff. And what else? What else can I nerd out about? Um, let's see. Yeah, so, so far looking pretty good. Um, prep for a dropper post. There, I don't know. There's a, there's a hole here. I don't know if this is just a drainage hole or it has to do with cabling for dropper posts. Again, I'm not very well versed in, in the dropper life, so forgive me. It's top tube straight across. Is there any rise? Um, good question. I will put it level to the ground. Um, it looks like there, there is a slightly upward slope, so not completely a horizontal top tube. That's important to you. Looks like it's got pretty generous um, frame bag clearance. So although it's sloping, it's not as, it's not like a super compact frame where you lose a lot of that uh, internal geometry inside. What else? Uh, it does look like a supple bike. Just kind of eyeballing the reach here. This looks good, feels good. All right, who wants to, oh, before I weigh it, I will mention one other component that I wanted to talk about. Um, so if you guys were watching my How Not To Go Bikepacking series, I was doing a series of shakedown rides with the Salsa Cutthroat, which is over there. And what I used was a, you know, care dice in the back and I was using the Ocean Air Cycles Erlen rack. Um, I was a little bit concerned that I wouldn't have the clearance here. So I contacted uh, Daniel over at Tumbleweed and he sent over one of their uh, T-Racks just in case. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with this, this is actually a really cool product. It used to be produced by Rat King Frames, but then Daniel took over production. And what it is, is a very kind of minimal, uh, basically a bag support. Uh, there is a, a version that, that can, that has an extra dog leg to keep uh, painters from going into your wheel. But this is really just, you know, for strapping a dry bag or for supporting a caradice or a bags by bird. And what's cool about it is uh, it comes in really wide and tall sizes. So if you, you know, have a bike like this or like the tumbleweed, uh, you don't have to stretch the struts uh, wide open. And on the strut here, it also has uh, mounting points for, for water bottles or an anything cage. So you can add a little bit more capacity on the bike. Um, yeah. Yep. Weising Lee, yeah, most important aspect is, uh, yeah, it holds water bottles on the sides. Um, I'm planning to, for the Ochiko, um, because I have pretty good capacity with the Bags by Bird bag, it's a tongue twister, and the a care dice that I can put water in there in the front, on the front, but I may also use this as a bag support uh, just so the bag doesn't hit the tire. Okay. Uh, what are we going to do here? So who wants to know what it weighs <laughs> without air in the tires? <laughs> Any guesses? Any guesses as to what this weighs? Carbon fork tie frame, 2.8 tires. Let's, uh, if you get close, I will send you a, a sticker pack. Um, so I'll give you guys a second to formulate your ideas. And again, <laughs> 100 pounds, maybe. Um, so this is a digital scale. 
generously donated to us by a viewer, uh, Felix Dupree. I feel like I should just name the scale Felix in, in, his, in his honor. Uh, all right, we're getting uh, guesses here. 24 pounds, 32 pounds, 21 pounds, 34.7, 26 pounds. Um, and as you guys know, if you've watched enough of these uh, live streams, I only give the weight in gins, G-I-N's, because that's what we do here. Whoa! Caught it. So I'm going to tar it, change it to gins, and we shall see. Okay. I will give, I will eventually give it in pounds, but just because I can, I will do it in gins first. I, I didn't even know what a gin was until I got the scale and saw there was an option. Okay. Okay, in gins, J-I-N, it is 20.4 gins. In ounces, another very useful measurement, <laughs> is 359 ounces. Kilograms, 10.2K. And in pounds, 22 pounds, dang. 22.48 pounds to be exact. That is without pedals, without cages, without baggage. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. I mean, I feel like a surly bike with regular size tires, uh, you know, weighs, you know, at least three, three, three to four pounds more. Um, I'm going to put air in here and reweigh it just so I can see if <laughs> that indeed does add weight, which I doubt, but, uh, commenters. Okay. So bear with, yeah. A Cuddy, uh, Tom, that is very light That is legit lightweight. So I'm excited. Okay, I'm gonna put some airs. I'm gonna use the fancy Silka travel pump here because sometimes we get fancy on the channel. Um, appears like there's air in the rear tire, so I will just inflate the front to something. Oh no! To something nice and supple. Um, I don't know if you guys have used the Silka pump, but these have the fancy Hero Check which uh, what's unique about it is it doesn't need very much uh, valve stem to, to uh, latch on. And it's just a super easy, just super easy. And you can preload, you know, things. So good stuff, Silka. Okay. All right, putting air. We're trying to put air. Okay. I think there's some sealant in the valve hole. <laughs> All right, sorry for the weird sounds. So if you guys have any questions, uh, <laughs> I know it was a joke. <laughs> if they're gonna leave uh, ask nine comments like that. <laughs> Let's see. What kind of scale is it? Uh, I'm not sure. It was an Amazon special, so I think it was Maybe not more than $20. So for that one commenter that was like, ooh, take the air out. <laughs> Let's see if it changed. Nope. <laughs> okay, but now I have scientific proof. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that lighter than your salsa cutthroat? That's a good question. I, I think it's par. It's par, so that's pretty, that's pretty remarkable given that this is a metal frame and a carbon fork. So, um, can you tell us the weight after you lube the chain? Um, no. <laughs> okay, now, now people are just gonna get salty, okay. Uh, all right, so you guys have any questions about the bike? Um, I can try to do some close-ups if I can move the camera. Let's try that. So I'm gonna, can I do that? Let me see. Sorry, guys. Actually, I will take it off the stand and hopefully not lose the live stream, stream here. If I were super fancy, I'd have uh, two cameras, a detail camera 
and wide angle, but I'm not super fancy like that. So here's a close up of the bike. Manual focus. So pretty sweet. There's logo, chain ring. Um, you can see the name right there. Nice looking bike. Let's look at the fork, guys. So you got our three pack mounts in carbon. And uh, yeah, so there's that really kind of industrial plate uh, yoke there. Uh, pretty cool. So I'm going to put you guys back on the stand and we can wrap this up. So hopefully, hopefully the detail shots were okay. <laughs> you can let me know. Okay, tap to focus. All right. Uh, let's uh, answer some questions. What is the bar tape like? It is a uh, kind of rubbery feeling. It's dimpled for aeroness. Um, there are kind of like these cloth finishing tape, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if that's for, so you can wipe, wipe your head while you're riding, get the sweat off. I'm gonna take this off this guy. Um, but it's nice, it's a nice tape. Different, different feeling from like a physique, but just because it's different doesn't mean it's bad. Okay. Back on the stand. Let's see, other questions you can answer. Uh, is that one of the best looking bikes you've reviewed? Um, I would say so. I mean, Ty just looks so damn good. And for me, my personal taste is something that's more understated and classy and timeless, like myself in some ways. Just kidding. Uh, and you know, this is definitely it. Um, bikes I don't like are where there's like a logo here, logo here, logo on the down tube, logo on the fork. It's like, okay, I bought the bike. I don't need to know what bike I bought. <laughs> so in terms of uh, being understated, classy, yet, uh, you know, maybe performance oriented, then this, this bike definitely uh, ticks those boxes. Kind of reminiscent of the, uh, the stainless steel Warrican that I reviewed, but this is Thai, so it's got some ex extra sexy points to it. Um, let's see, what else? So it's definitely in the, the running for one of the, the, the most aesthetically pleasing bikes uh, I've reviewed on the channel. I don't know if I've reviewed a truly ugly bike. Let me see. I don't know, They're, none of them were like super, super offensive. They're, you know, aside from like color preferences. Um, like this Marin over here, it's kind of this blasted, uh, not quite desert sand color, but it's pretty understated. Um, what else? Uh, you got the Thesis bike in red, which is also kind of understated. So you guys, there's a theme. What else? What seat comes with it? It is a WTB of some sort. I'm not sure what specific model. Uh, but I will probably swap this out for a Brooks so I can run a saddlebag. So the seat will go eventually. Um, Volt saddle. All right. Let's see. Aerodinger, the pinkish crest wasn't so hot. See, that's a divisive bike. I think it was a jam. I bought one. <laughs> so I think it's hot. And I'm going to put a pink ass uh Pomple Moose print frame bag in, in the pink Bombora. So again, uh, different, different preferences. Let's see. Any other questions? I'm gonna try to move this computer up here. What I really need is like a teleprompter so I can just see all the comments without having to, to look away. But we're not, we're not fancy like that, guys. Just trying our best. Uh, would this be suited for the Great Divide? I don't see why not. I mean, people, you know, if the Cutthroat can do it, it's got a smaller tire, then this would definitely, you know, kind of rock it as well. So for sure. Um, yeah, Ar Aerodigener, oh God, have a hard time with that. Um, yeah, the Crust Bombora, from what I've heard, is like six months out now. It used to be four. 
uh, rumors. And I also heard that that's gonna be offered as a complete bike soon. Maybe it had something to do with my review, but it was truly one of the most fun bikes I've ridden this year. And I'm paying like full retail for it just because I had to buy it off of someone and all that stuff. So what hat is that? Uh, this is the Rivendell hat. I believe these are already sold out. It's this uh, manufacturer of baseball caps uh, in the US closed down. This is their last run of them. Uh, but if you want another cool hat, this is a pretty cool one. I picked this up uh, this past weekend. This is a collaboration between Cole and Swift Industries. Has an illustration uh, on the brim uh, by Chris McNally. There's a black one with more illustration here, but I like the un understated uh, olive one. I mean, you may sense the theme here, but this one, this one fits, fits pretty good too. And this one's pretty well ventilated, so good for hot days. I know Jason from Swift goes trail running on his on occasion. So, and you can do that thing and see the print. So, uh, ba -ba -ba. gravel bike pirate, do you contact the bike companies or do they contact you to review their bikes? I do a lot of contacting <laughs> with uh, oftentimes not very much responses. So it's definitely a, a, a scattershot approach. Some brands super easy to work with, some brands uh, not responsive and, and give, zero, give zero Fs. So I know some people have the perception that we're a huge channel and people are sending bikes every day, but it's definitely not like that. Like I do a lot of legwork, a lot of having to convince people that yes, I do have an audience. Yes, they will buy your products. Um, you know, that you know, people trust these reviews and I try to do a good job of them. So it's, it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, I should be wearing the bear claw cap. I don't know. And some, someone no doubt will be like, oh, you're just a shield for bear claw. But I will, I will put it on because it is an olive-ish color. So there you go. <laughs> it's hard guys. Like, uh, you know, I try to keep the channel on level. Again, Bear Claw not paying me. They're not paying for this live stream. I just said, hey, I'm gonna do this thing. Uh, the bike gets shipped back to them um, unless I love it so much that I have to buy it. So, you know, like we, like you'll, you'll notice on other websites, you know, people reprint the same press release. You know, they're kind of the part of the press release circle. Uh, I don't believe in that. You know, I, I, don't, I don't do press releases. You know, I don't like to talk about products I don't actually get to, to ride uh, first and, you know, have firsthand experience with them. So that's what I try to do. Uh, let's see. David, I appreciate that, but I won't name the brands. <laughs> well, actually, if you really want to know, I'll, I'll uh, d DM me on Instagram and I'll DM you back. But I, I'm trying not to, to throw anyone under the bus publicly anymore. because I got my, my wrist slapped because of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Three wardrobe changes. New record. Let's get, this channel's getting fancy, guys. <laughs> um, will I have prints of my San Juan watercolors? Yes, Timothy. Um, I'm actually going to invest in a nicer uh, scanner soon. Uh, get better quality just to so I can do more interesting reproduction projects with those watercolors because uh, I enjoy it people seem to enjoy it and you know it's another way that we can another product we can sell on the channel to to keep things keep things moving um, yeah gravel bike thanks yeah it is a lot of work especially especially the early days you know it's like if in the bike industry if you're not racing if you're not on the podium like a lot of brands don't even give you the time of day um, you know, like I'll email people multiple times and it's, you know, they're like, who, who the, who the fuck are you? <laughs> so try my best, try my best. Um, bike made you the saddest to ship back. That was easily the crest of Bambora. Now I'll tell you why it's because I was going back and forth with Matt and I was like, oh, can I buy your bike? And he said, yeah, you can totally do it. And he came through town and he was like, dude, I hate to break your heart, but I need it for uh, Japan Grinduro. Uh, you have to send it back. I was like, oh. I was like, well, when's <laughs> when are you getting you frames? And he said four months, and I was like, ah. Oh. So that one, but I was able to get one uh, in Portland, so that was good. Let's see. What else? What else? What else? Yeah. So this is one by only, uh, no front derailleur. Any more bike fishing videos planned? Uh, we've got a trip planned out to Idaho. That I think this bike would be perfect for too. 
So uh, I'm hoping to use this for the Ochika Overlander. I, I have to put bags on it and make sure that everything is not going to hit the tires. <laughs> I've got short legs, people. So it's, you know, that's why bike packing bags don't really work for me all the time. Uh, so we'll see. I've got to see if that fits and if it, if it fits and I'll take it on there. But if not, this will go on a bike fishing trip to Idaho. Um, let's see. Hello from Gibraltar. Awesome. Uh, come to Boise. Yeah, Cody. Uh, I don't know if you, you know, Daniel, Daniel Malloy from Tumbleweeds up there, uh, also into bike fishing. Uh, we'd been talking about doing a, a bike fishing trip together, test out, you know, the tumbleweed and, and, uh, make some internets. So hopefully that'll happen. Uh, David, did I see any whales? Did I see any whales last week? We didn't see, uh, I didn't personally see whales. I, we saw a bunch of, uh, harbor seals, which were super cute. Um, lots of birds. Uh, lots of rising trout at uh, some of the lakes. We rode up to Mount Constitution. There's a series of lakes going up there. And on one of them, there's just like fish, trout rising left and right. So that's pretty cool. How's the front through axle? Uh, it looks good. It went in straight. <laughs> Again, I'm not, you know, it's just been on the stand. So uh, I'm not going to review how the bike rides quite yet, but um, it's screwed in there. So good job. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so any other questions for Jason? Uh, do you still have to peace out soon? Um, and if you guys have any qu questions, just let them know. If you guys have any other questions about any other bikes I'm reviewing, oh, I will just get to that. So there, I have a long queue of uh, bike reviews coming your way. Um, thesis OB1 is a... Uh, I've written it, I've written my thoughts. I just have to, to do the piece to camera. Uh, bomb track, hook, adventure. So that's your steel bike with a dropper post and short, short front suspension um, fork. That's in the queue. Marin, uh, Nicasio Plus is in the queue. Um, I'm gonna do a review of the Rodriguez uh, Finney Ridge that I rode in Seattle, as well as the uh, Kona Rove ST Special Limited Edition with Swift. Um, I got to know that bike pretty well, rode it for the last week on some really hilly terrain. So that will be uh, another bike to review. And I think that might be it for, uh, and of course this one, that, that might be it for the season because we're gonna get snow in not too long. So lots of lots of cool bikes down the pipe, pipeline. Okay, so Jason can stick around for a little bit more. Uh, so CNM Cycles, do you know the widest tire you can fit? Um, Plus size uh, is what it's spec for. So assuming at least three might have clearances for more. Uh, Jason, you can chime in. Yeah, so either 27.3 or 29 by 2.6. So pretty roomy. Yeah, outdoor West Ochoa Overlander is next week. Uh, so I am leaving for Prineville with uh, my buddy Kyle on Thursday. So we're going to drive all day Thursday, get to uh, Prineville Friday. And uh, I think if fr Friday might be when it actually starts. <laughs> Crap. Yeah. So as you can see, really, really tight timeline with this. This is the bike I'm intending to ride with. So I got to dial it in and make sure it's going to work. Um, but yeah, it's, it's coming up. And to be honest, I feel kind of underprepared. Um, didn't get to do as much riding as I'd hoped. First day is a monster of a day, but I, I'm thinking I, if I can just survive that first 75 mile, mile day, then I'll be good to go. Um, what time of uh, year does Overlander happen, Tyler? Uh, it happens this time of year. <laughs> it's happening this. It's happening on Thursday, buddy. Uh, last year it was a little bit later, and then we got that freezing rain that if you guys watched the video you saw. So they've moved it up a couple weeks this year. Um, so they're, I think they're still kind of fine tooling fine tuning when it will be. But it sounds like there are 34 registered riders. Uh, should be a good time. Should be a good time. So let's see. What else we got? What time is it? It's 12.53. So we've been, I think I'll keep chatting for another seven minutes, make a nice even hour. So if you guys have any other questions, uh, let me see what else I can show you. Um, I will show you some random things that are in here. Hold on one second.
So again, uh, 5 p.m. tonight, there is going to be a live premiere of uh, the, the video, and it just sounds more dramatic than it is, but basically um, the video that I made about our weekend on the San Juans is going to go up at 5 p.m. I'm going to be in the chat room with you guys asking, asking questions. I think um, two other people on the trip might also be in the chat room. Hopefully Swift and Chris McNally will be there uh, just watching the video together you know, as a group event. I'm not going to be speaking to the camera. You, just, you guys are going to be watching the videos and just chatting. Uh, you can ask me questions. So the theme of that trip, if you recall, is uh, was a, a bike tour in the San Juans with some illustration. And one of the cool things we got was this cool uh, art kit from uh, Swift Industries. So it came with a, a black wing, a micron pen. If you're a pen nerd, you know what these are. Um, but the coolest thing is this guy. This is like the bike packing watercolor palette. I mean, it's that's just to give you a sense of size. But look at that, it's so cute. <laughs> you definitely have to work within its limits, no big washes or anything like that. But uh, if you're just doing a, a small, small notebook, it actually worked out pretty well. So super cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think CNM cycles this, you know, I've got studded 650B tires. Uh, on the on the Jones bike during the winter. I think this would be an awesome winter bike too. Um, yeah. Josh, I do agree freezing rain is the worst. It's the worst because you know a little bit colder it would be snow and you wouldn't be soaked. Uh, a little bit warmer, you'd, I guess you'd be soaked. <laughs> um, do you, Alex, do you think you can review the drop bar framed Alaskan fat bike is frame the brand. Um, I don't know. I don't know if, uh, how much fat, fat bike reviews I'll be doing this winter because my plan is to be in Tucson <laughs> for the winter. So, uh, making more like gravel riding content. Uh, what's the flare of the handlebars? Uh, I'm not quite sure I can kind of turn them and you can see. So it's, I'd say pretty generous. Okay, what I like about these handlebars is it's got a short reach, so you're not kind of leveraged over. It's got a short drop, uh, so both are pretty useful if you're not like uber flexible. And that it comes out level, and that it comes back behind the bar. So you've got um, a lot of, a lot of uh, real estate to play with on the bar. Some, some handlebars I've seen, they're a little bit short, and then they're designed so this isn't level and I always feel like I'm gonna fall off the back of those so that's why I like bars like this uh, or uh, another if you like the cow chipper another bar you should check out is the Richie uh, Venture Max uh, kind of similar philosophy it does have a little bit of an ergonomic bend uh, in the hook here uh, but both both are pretty good all right well, I think I'm going to end it here. A uh, good place to stop because I can <laughs> transfer the, the bags on the cutthroat to here and hopefully it'll work. Um, but thank you, uh, thank you, Jason from Bear Claw for joining us in the chat, helping field some questions. Uh, thank you to you guys for uh, being in the chat, making it in interactive uh, for watching the channel. And again, if you guys like content like this, there's different way ways to support the channel all in the description below. Uh, you can join us on Patreon where you get sweet discounts, like 20% off of Swift stuff, 20% off of Velo Orange, 20% off of uh, Soma, off of uh, Post Carry Company. So we're working with lots of brands that we reviewed and that we truly love. Uh, to give you guys a discount. We don't get any commission on sales. It's just an added value uh, for the people that support us on Patreon and PayPal. You know, so for that $7 a month uh, to keep this content going, you also get lots, lots of discounts. Like it's like the most awesomest uh, bike coupon book. So yeah. So if you wanna do that, you can do that. Or uh, if you're not comfortable supporting us monthly, totally understand. Uh, you can buy a sticker, a patch, uh, watercolors, we've got all sorts of, of goodies uh, that you can partake in. Um, I think I might have moved the thing there. Okay, so I think with uh, all that said, let's see if there are any other last minute questions. Um, 
doesn't look like it. So I'm going to end it here, guys. Uh, you know how, you know the drill. Uh, until next time, keep the supple side down. Let's see.